Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., Julie interviews experts on all areas of clutter, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. Learn easy-to-implement tips on how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award-winning professional organizer and coach, Julie also shares suggestions to help you live clutter-free for a more joyful and fulfilling life. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Do you feel stuck in life? Are you ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Individual coaching and our unique clutter-free living mastermind support people in becoming free, moving forward, and achieving success. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Hey, everyone. No matter if you are a stay-at-home mom, a small business owner, a college student, you're most likely to have email overload. I don't know about you, but at one point I had four different emails and thought my head was going to explode. Email is not going away anytime soon, so we are going to give you great tips today to help you declutter your inbox and to not go crazy with email. Emily Parks founded Organize for Success, LLC, in 2007 and specializes in productivity and technology for small business for both PC and Mac. She utilizes technology and business organization systems to help clients increase efficiency and output by creating customized plans to incorporate into daily operations. She provides one-on-one -on -one and team consulting, customized workshops and trainings, workflow processes, and how to organize your workspace. She's an Evernote Business Certified Consultant, as well as an instructor at North Carolina State University's Technology Training Solutions Centers. Welcome, Emily. Hello, Julie, and thank you for having me. Emily is our official, unofficial technology advisor. I have roped her into doing some type of technology podcast with us every quarter. It's good stuff, and I'd encourage you. We have, I think, three or four others with her. So if technology, it can help you not only in business, but also in your personal life. Let's get started today. In your experience, what causes the most email clutter? Julie, subscriptions are a huge cause of clutter when it comes to our email. We sign up for an e-newsletter because we think we'll read every word of it then our interests change or the content isn't what we expected and we're just holding on to them for that someday when we'll want to read or need it and have to reference back to it. And Likewise, whenever we order something online, we often opt into the sales offers from that store, which further adds to the onslaught of email messages. Instead, if we simply unsubscribe, we stop wasting the time of repeatedly hitting delete, and we eliminate much of that clutter that's filling up our email account. Well, I have to admit, guilty is charged, unfortunately, and I know that, that I have some work to do. What are, in your business, have you found the common mistakes that people make when dealing with email? What are we doing wrong? I found that personal retention folders are one of the trickiest details for dealing with email. It really is an art form to have enough folders so that each message you'll retain has a home, but not so many folders that any one message could be retained in more than one place. The bottom line is this. If you struggle with where to file an email that is to be kept, how will you ever be able to find it later when you really need it? I encourage folks to keep the list of personal retention folders no longer than what can be seen on one screen. However, it varies from person to person. It's important to have a folder in which each message can be kept, but no more than one folder for each type of message that's received. Plus, if we are checking email instead of processing it upon that first reading, we're dealing with the same message over and over again, reading and rereading. Um, Plus, we think about it when we're away from our email, even subconsciously, and it's just not efficient. So I suggest that folks think about Ohio, which means only handle it once. That's a, a good guiding principle for each message that's received. 
Outstanding. Now, I took a class with you, and I, I don't remember which one, but I had an aha moment because you suggested that we look at email differently. Can you share with, what, with us what that is? Oh, yes. Uh, typically, when handling email, we do what we all say is check our messages, which means we pick up a mobile device while we're on the go, we glance through our newly received messages, and we respond to those that we deem most urgent. Unfortunately, this means those other messages remain in our inbox until the next time we, quote, check our email, which means we have to reread each of them and start over from scratch on the process of thinking through a response. How are we going to deal with that email? We're repeating actions over and over again, plus leaving those messages that we've read but have yet to answer in our inbox just adds to our clutter. It makes it harder to weed through the messages that we have to determine what needs a response and what needs an immediate response. Instead, I partner with professionals to process email instead of just checking it. The email inbox then becomes a processing zone instead of a holding zone and less time is wasted. Normally we receive just four different types of email messages and each can be processed in a specific way. First we have tasks. Tasks that take less than five minutes should be done when the message is first received. It's going to take longer to reread the email, get our thought processes reoriented, than just to get it done. So follow Nike's principle and just do it. Otherwise, if it's something that takes longer than five minutes to do, I encourage you to add it to a running to-do list and remove it from your inbox. That way it gets scheduled with a win and it's no longer adding to that inbox clutter. If you're using Outlook, you can turn the email into a task right there in your email management tool. However, for other email management tools, you just partner with a task manager and you can move forward seamlessly. Second, we have appointment requests. These are either people that want to schedule time with you or inviting you to a meeting. They should be moved to your calendar as quickly as possible. Third, we have reference emails. Those are ones that you need to read, but can be immediately moved into the appropriate personal folder after you've read them. And fourth, we have trash. Keep in mind, trash is different than junk, but it's pretty self-explanatory that once you've read your trash emails, they can be moved into your trash bin. Okay, well, I need, to, I need a little help on that because I'm sometimes guilty of not trashing emails when I should. What are some guidelines to know when to trash an email? As we process newly received emails, it's important to have guidelines in mind about what we should keep, what we should not keep, and how to act moving forward. When I work with clients or when I'm processing my own emails, I do have a basic principle in mind. For me, there's no need to hold on to whatever is no longer accurate, applicable, useful, or bringing me joy. In this day and age of information changing so rapidly, what is accurate, applicable, or useful can change quickly. Therefore, it's important to keep up with what, what you personally consider accurate, applicable, and useful, but also to to regularly review what you filed away in those personal retention folders. Maybe you double check one folder per month, or maybe you review all your folders every six months. Whatever schedule works for you is best, but it's certainly an ongoing effort to keep emails edited. Additionally, when you're thinking about what to save or delete, consider what can be easily located online later. We live in an information age. Therefore, if a simple online search can easily recover the most up-to-date version of that specific information, there is no need to fill up your email database with that content. And last but certainly not least, keep in mind what is trash or junk from the get-go. If you have goals in mind for how you're going to utilize this tool, email, as a productivity tool, then you can more easily figure out what's trash, what's junk, and what's to be kept. A junk email is often referred to as spam because it's something we never wanted to begin with. However, trash is something we like receiving, but we certainly don't need to keep. Like a message about donuts being in the conference room. 
it's nice to know there's donuts to eat, but I don't need to keep that message. Delete really can be your friend. Oh, fantastic. That's one of the advantages of working from home mainly is that I don't have to get donuts anymore because I ate my, my fair share of donuts in, the, in my office days. Now, I would love for you to share. You and I are actually on a couple of the same listservs, but I found that especially if you don't have the option to get a group or di a digest, but if people would just simply in the email put the subject or any type of information, I'm convinced we could save hours upon hours for the world. I mean, just because people just don't know how to send an email correctly. Can you give us some tips? If you're the sender, what's a good way to send a, a proper email? Those emails do tend to multiply from the listservs. And there's a couple of listservs where there's people that are monitoring to make sure that people follow your advice about making sure that the subject applies to the content in the email. And I think that is hugely helpful advice. But there are other things that we can keep in mind. It seems counterintuitive, but sending fewer emails out really truly means that we get fewer emails back in. On a similar note, if you've been emailing back and forth with someone, keep a limit on how many times you'll reply back before you just pick up the phone and give that person a call. It's really amazing how we can handle in just a short phone call what would have taken ages of going back and forth via email. Now, there is certainly value in having a written record of an email conversation, uh, but it's very easy when you finish your phone call to document it with a follow-up email. That way you save the time of emailing back and forth, but you still have that written record. In addition, please be sure to use reply all sparingly. While all the recipients might have needed the original message, it's important to reevaluate each recipient on subsequent follow-up emails. Those, those folks that are getting that email might not appreciate having their inboxes flooded with all of the, the follow-up emails that are just not related to them. So be aware of the recipients when you're doing reply all and use it sparingly. Excellent. And that is one thing I can pat. I have, I'm guilty a couple of areas here, but I am very good about the reply all button. Now I wanted to ask you, are there any apps or programs you recommend for reducing email clutter? Oh, Julie, I'm so glad that you asked about that. Yes, there are tons of excellent tech tools that will assist people in reducing email clutter. For folks that are using Gmail, AOL, Yahoo, or iCloud email addresses, there's this great tool called Unroll.me. It allows you to call together all your email subscriptions. You just go to Unroll.me, enter your email address, it goes out into cyberspace and deciphers exactly everything that you are subscribed to receive, there's not a login, password, all those things. Then you receive all your subscriptions at once in a daily roll-up or bundle instead of individually throughout the whole day. You can choose to keep receiving certain emails when you want to receive those emails, and you can also quickly unsubscribe directly from the Unroll.me website. But I like the fact that I control when I receive those emails instead of the person sending them to me controlling when I receive the emails. Another powerful tool for those that use Gmail is Boomerang. It's free and lets users take control of when they send and receive email messages. Just like you send a boomerang out and it comes back to you, you can send an email out and have it come back to you when it's most appropriate to receive that message. Mailbox is a free solution from Dropbox that helps people on Android devices, iPhones, iPads, and Macs to better process their emails. It uses rules to automate email processing, lets users swipe to archive or trash a message, and really helps users return emails to their inboxes on designated dates. So you are controlling your email rather than your email controlling you. Likewise, SaneBox has subscription services from just $7 a month that allow users to unsubscribe in one click, 
It offers response tracking for messages that you've sent. It lets users snooze non-urgent emails. And it really learns how to prioritize emails based off of how each individual uses the tool and, and processes their own email. Very counterintuitive. And finally, Maelstrom is another subscription option that allows people to process their inboxes with the tool and then it learns how people are processing their emails so it can highlight the fastest path for that individual person to get to inbox zero. Each of these is really powerful and it's incredible what extra stress and strain is alleviated when we sort of automate that email processing system. It does. It makes a huge difference. Now, do you have any advice? You know, I have a personal email as well as my business email, and I know I'm not the only person out there. So what advice do you have for those of us that have multiple email accounts? Absolutely. I really like having different email accounts for different purposes. However, when folks do that, I do recommend that you use the same tools for processing all your accounts, whether it's on your phone, your tablet, your laptop, or your desktop computer. For example, if you have one email coming into Outlook on your laptop, make sure that each of your email accounts has an inbox within that same Outlook tool. Likewise, if you have them coming into a mail tool on your mobile device, then it should be all emails coming into there. You can choose whether to process them all in a shared inbox or each email account's individual inbox, but you have them all in one place whether at your desk or on the go. And you don't have to log into multiple places to process your emails. We don't realize how those seconds add up of, oh, I'm going into this tool for this email, then I'm logging into this website for this email, and I can check this on my phone, but I can check this on my laptop. Um, one thing to keep in mind also as people are on the go is the difference between an IMAP account and a POP account. If you go into your account settings and check for your incoming mail server, you may notice the letters IMAP or POP. If it says POP and you're checking on multiple different devices, you're having to delete or move to folders on each individual device. But if you contact your email service and say, I want to make sure that it's an IMAP or has the IMAP on your your server information, then when you change the email on one device, it will automatically do it for all your devices. That's especially helpful for people that, that are using more than one email address. Oh, excellent. I always saw that but had no clue what it meant. So I love it when I learn something. I'm what? happy to help. Yeah, absolutely. What's been your biggest challenge with email clutter and how did you overcome it? Sometimes it's very challenging for me to not use my email inbox as a to-do list. But I have found that completing my weekly strategy session and my daily wrap-ups always empowers me to get away from that bad habit. I'm able to streamline my tasks into a running to-do list from which I can pull each day's must-do items. I get more accomplished when all my tasks are together, whether it's from email, face-to-face -face meetings, phone calls or whatever, and it's a much more productive way of knowing exactly what must be done by when and by whom, as well as to block off time in my schedule to truly move the items from to do to done. If I just leave it in a list, then it's waiting for that someday, and I have yet to find a calendar that says someday on it. Fantastic. Now, do you have any final thoughts on reducing our email clutter? Yes, I do have a few items to highlight. Um, first, I want to highly encourage everyone to get to know the tools you're already using to handle your email. Chances are really good that your current tools do much more than you are aware to empower your better managing email. For example, if you're using Outlook 2010 or later, you have this really cool feature of clear conversations that will allow you to remove duplicates of the same conversation. You can keep only the most recent in a back and forth exchange, all with the click of a button and removing quite a bit of clutter. If you're using Mac Mail, you have the feature of 
send again that allows you to send the same message to a new recipient without it looking forwarded or copying and pasting or any of those actions. That removes the need to keep templates or excess drafts or anything that would clutter up your email account. And many different email managers offer the feature of rules. So you're able to set up which messages need to bypass your inbox completely and go directly to specified retention folders. This can be great for drawing your attention to urgent emails from specific senders or for those e-newsletters that you didn't put into unroll.me but you want to go to an e-newsletter folder or things like that. Plus, you can often set up a retention schedule right in your email tool settings, like when to empty your trash can after a specified amount of time or to remove archives after a set time frame. Very, very helpful. So investigate what you're already using to make sure you're getting the best out of it. Second, when you're talking about managing email, we often think of messages as the only form of clutter. However, I'd like to propose that those pings and dings and all the different notifications that are associated with our email management tools can add to our overwhelm and be considered a form of clutter too. Research shows that it can take anywhere from three to eight minutes for us to refocus after each distraction. So I want you to think about each one of those pings, dings, notifications as being a different distraction and think about how many extra minutes add up during the day of wasted time when you're refocusing after that distraction. So I encourage you, turn off any notifications related to new messages received. It could be the sounds, it could be that number that appears beside the icon of your email management tool, or it could be the pop-up previews that you see for incoming emails in the corner of your screen. Those notifications are a distraction and they're adding to the clutter in your life. Finally, keep in mind that we establish what others' expectations are. If we don't set the expectation, folks will fill that in with what makes sense to them not necessarily always what we want that expectation to be. However, if we always reply immediately to new messages, then others come to expect that. If we set time frames during which we process new emails, folks come to expect that they'll hear from us within that time frame. If you get a message from a VIP, you can set up unique notifications for only those VIP's emails and then send them a quick note about when to expect a reply but lower your stress, get more done, and be more efficient by setting others' expectations with specific times or time frames for processing your emails. If they know, you're going to hear, if they know that they're going to hear from you within 24 hours or every 4 hours or every 12 hours or whatever, then they're not as worried about, well, did she get it, what, what, how long do I have to wait, things like that. Set others' expectations, and you won't have that grief or worry. Yeah, I learned that the other day. I someone brought something from from my store, and literally a minute later, I was like, "Where is it?" And so I said, "Well, it's it's I have different products, so it's not automated." But it was a great lesson for me because I now have something that says, "Please note, this isn't an automated automated service. It'll be 24 to 48 hours before you receive it." But then, you know, that was a couple cluttered inbox emails from them wanting to know where it is and I love the audio clutter about all the dings and pings I think that's an excellent tip so I'm super excited you mentioned that now do you want to share one last tip for people to support them in releasing clutter anywhere in their life Julie I believe that the criteria for what emails to keep or delete can be applicable to many areas of our lives it could be paper or electronic files physical items, or even how we allocate our time. There's no need to hold on to whatever is no longer accurate, applicable, useful, or bringing us joy. Keeping that mantra in mind for all aspects of our lives can be quite powerful and empowering. Outstanding. Okay, so tell people where can they find out information about you, any good stuff that you've got going on you'd like to share. Absolutely. People can visit my website at organizeforsuccess.biz, seen on the screen below us, to read my blog posts, subscribe to my monthly newsletter, 
link over to my social media pages for regular updates, view what products and services I have to offer, and find out more about my upcoming events. Those include classes I'll be teaching at what dates and times, particularly those at North Carolina State University's Technology Training Solutions Unit. As your business grows and evolves, I really want to play a role in helping you achieve your successes, helping you find and implement just the optimum resources for driving your desired results. And there's tons of content to aid in that process on my website. Again, that's organizedforsuccess.biz. All right. Thank you so much, Emily. And I'd encourage you, we have three or four more interviews with Emily that deal with getting clutter out of your technology. Lots of good stuff there. I've taken her classes. And if you're looking to get a little more efficient and organized using technology, she, she is definitely your gal. So thank you, Emily, for today. Thank you so much, Julie. It's my pleasure. All right, everyone. Go out. Clear some clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Are you overwhelmed by clutter? Do you feel stuck in life? Are you ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Individual coaching and our unique clutter-free living mastermind support people in becoming free, moving forward, and achieving success. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks for tuning in to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of 10 Clutter-Free Living Tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's coaching, e-books, online monthly decluttering classes, how to organize your life, office hours, and her unique clutter-free living mastermind at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. You can also watch all episodes on YouTube or download on iTunes and more. Join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.